Good morning and welcome to Fat Cow Farm. Now, last night we got truckloads of rain, which is great. Now, it was close, I've checked the gauge already and it was close to around about 65 to 70 mil. Now, I thought I'd take this opportunity to explain to you how we are going about water management here at Fat Cow Farm and the problems that we had when we first bought it, especially when it came to grass and drought proofing what we have because we did find over winter that we had to bring in some hay to supplement the cows. Now I want to go through the process of eliminating that hay supplement and just having them all as grass fed. So what I'd like to do this morning is explain to you how we're going about that process with the introduction of swales to fat cow farm. Come with me and I'll show you what they're all about. I'll see you soon. Okay, so here we are at the top of Fat Cow Farm. We're at swale number one. Now we have three of these swales running all the way through the property. Now, the swales itself are all made level, contour of the land as it snakes around the properties and whatnot. So you can see behind me that this is fairly level right now. Now, from last night's rain, and from runoff and the, the moisture coming from the soil, we're close to about 150 to 200 mil here. Now, what we have noticed is that at this very point in time, this is gonna take around about a week to absorb into the soil. Now, when we first dug this swale and we had our first good rains, what we were finding is that it would be at the same sort of levels but it would only last like a day, day and a half at max. And then what we noticed is that as the rains and everything started coming through, the time the water was absorbed into the soil became a lot slower. So what that's telling me is that the, the soils are already starting to become hydrated. And the efficiency of what these swales are doing are actually proving themselves to be an absolute godsend for us in drought proofing our property and how we're going to manage our water management in years to come. Come with me and I'll show you a little bit further down and we'll go from there. I'll see you soon. Okay, now, as I said before, we've only had these in place for around about a year now. Now, what we're finding is its own little natural ecosystem is starting to evolve. We're getting water reeds come up already. Now, that for me is the perfect scenario. So what we're finding is that the water reeds actually have long tap roots, which penetrate deeper into the soil, which gets our water absorption deeper into the subsoil. But also too, what we're gonna find is that as these water reeds start evolving, it's all about evaporation. So yes, the water content will be there, but when the sun comes out in the afternoons, we're actually reducing our water evaporation, meaning that we can actually hold the water in place for a longer period of time so that it can slowly move down through the pastures. Now, I'm gonna take you around the corner here and just show you how we're going to establish the swales because these swales are a three-part process. One being the swales need to be dug, two, being that they need to be fenced and protected from stock and whatever else you've got coming through the property. And three, they need to be treed or planted out so that the evaporation and the whole ecosystem themselves is evolving here at this very point in time. Again, for um, things like food forests and, and things like that, where all the nutrients from the trees falls into the swales, water comes through, decomposes everything and pushes those nutrients back through that soil pasture land to give us a higher yielding grass crop. So I'll take you up a little bit further and I'll see you soon. <laughs> okay, so here we are. Now, if you look over my left hand shoulder, you'd be able to see a big large mound. Okay, now that mound is the spoil from digging the swales. Now, not only is that important for us, 
but this boil has been resting, like I said, for about a year, and it's holding that water in place. Now, if you go on to the other side of the swale, that's still natural gradient and fall, so that's all still flat. So what we're finding is that the water will come through the pastures, through the soil, over the top, land in our swales, and be held up. I'll talk about some fencing and then some planting, so I'll see you soon. All right then, so as we were saying before, there's three steps to every swale that you put into the property. One being the excavation works, two being the perimeter fences, keeping stock out, and three, planting out and establishing that food forest. Now, we'll introduce and go through some more videos about how we're gonna be fencing out. Another video being how we're gonna do our food forest, but the most important thing there is that we have still not achieved our potential for what this swale needs to do. If you imagine deciduous trees all dropping their leaf litter into the swale. Now, it's the nutrients of all that leaf litter being broken down, transferring through the soils. That is our end goal, and that's what we're gonna try and achieve. Now, that will take some time. I would be thinking that that full potential would be around about that five to eight year period, but we've made a start. We'll come along for the journey, and we'll see you soon. Oh, and I forgot, subscribe. I'll check you then on the next one. See you soon.